Hello and welcome to another episode of Shell Pick brought to you by the CWC Ashoka University. I am Ajishman Sarkar, I am a senior writing tutor here and today I will be talking about some books related to art history. So these books uh, cover not just Indian or South Asian art history per se, but it includes um, global art historical accounts as well as uh, important uh, publications in history of art as a discipline which have uh, really had a profound impact on me as an art historian or as an academic. So I will begin with this book, it's called The Desire of My Eyes. Um, it's written by this German art historian Ulpen Kim and it was originally published in German in 1983 with this English translation coming out only in the 1990s. Um, so it, bas it's, it is basically the life and works of the English art critic and commentator as well as art writer John Ruskin, one of the most important art writers of the 19th century. Um, so it traces the life of John Ruskin from his childhood, um, from being born to as a son of a wine merchant and then growing up uh, to study at Oxford and then um, indulging in the uh, study perusal and writing about art. Uh, so it is a very well written book and um, going through this actually makes a profound impact on anyone who is interested in art or its history or any kind of writing about art as such. So I will just read one quote which um, is from John Ruskin and it appears at the back cover of this book uh, which says the greatest thing a human soul ever does in this world is to see something and tell what it saw in a plain way. Hundreds of people can talk for one who can think, but thousands can think for one who can see. To see clearly is poetry, prophecy and religion all in one. So that is what um, encompasses the basic crux of the outlook that John Ruskin provided and which became so phenomenal after his passing away well after the 19th century and is still definitive of many sort of um, criticism and appraisals of art that we witness even well into the 21st century. The next book I'm going to talk about is called The Last Lectures by Roger Fry. It was compiled and published by the British art historian Kenneth Clark sometime around 1939. So Roger Fry was the slate professor of fine arts at Cambridge University and one of the most prominent figures in the world of art criticism and art theory well around um, the end of the 19th to the 20th century. Um, so coming from John Ruskin's appraisal of the connoisseurial eye, we find in Roger Fry's writing a kind of development of formalist thinking which then uh, influences uh, how we uh, critique and write about art starting from the 20th century onwards. So in these lectures by Roger Fry, he covers not just uh, art from the European world, but also from ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, and going into India, China, and all other places. Um, so this book has been definitive, and it has been one of the greatest influences uh, to me as an art historian, uh, because of its uh, uh, style of writing about form, and how form becomes so important in the study of art and art history that becomes in a way contemplative about the discipline of art history as well um, in which direction it should go, what are its um, scope and what should be its focus and what um, essentially determines what the practice of art history is and what it isn't. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is called Art and Form from Roger Fry to Global Modernism. It was published in 2019 and it is written by Sam Rose who is professor of art history at the University of St. Andrews. Um, so this book basically brings together all kinds of formalistic perspective within the bounds of two power pages. Um, it basically engages with modernism and how formalist critics have been um, shown in somewhat a negative light when it comes to uh, segregating art from life in the manner in which the formalist critics have placed tremendous importance on art and form rather than the context from which it has developed, that is life itself. So a kind of anthropocentrism has been um, criticized by the formalists throughout um, the 20th and the beginnings of the 21st century. Um, that is uh, a bias which perhaps exists in our disciplinary world throughout departments worldwide. And that has been sought to, ad to be addressed by Sam Rose in this book, um, where he basically argues that it is not that formalists are detached from society and human life which inspires art, but that formalist criticism in many ways has to fall back upon and is extensively related to what um, the human life experience is. 
So in this book, um, Sam Rose not only deals with Eurocentric art, but also goes into colonial India and Nigeria and draws examples from all sorts of uh, artworks which can be deemed in today's terms as global modernism. Uh, so this uh, indeed provides a very fresh outlook and it remains one of my most favorite books to come out in the last decade because of this reason. So the next book that I have on my desk is called The Question of Style uh, in Philosophy and the Arts. It has been edited by Carolyn Van Eyck, James McAllister and Rene Van de Waal. So it basically concerns the question of style and how that is uh, used in the study of art history and history of architecture and art criticism and theory. It basically concentrates upon the 18th and the 19th century. So beginning from the 19th century, which is actually considered a very profound moment in the writing uh, about art and the uh, cultivation of the discipline of art history as such. Um, starting from the developments that already happened in the formalist school as we discussed priorly. Uh, during this time, uh, it was also the period, especially in the 18th century when we had Descartes and you also had um, the applications of vitruvianism in architecture. So all these kinds of um, approaches uh, are some kind of um, signals that are definitive of the kinds of engagement of, with style that has been followed uh, in the discipline of art. So the essays in this book uh, concern not just that, it also engages with paintings like those of William Hogarth um, uh, and also uh, art historical writings by Wolf Lynn, which draws upon style as one of the basic premises to distinguish various schools of art. Um, so in that context, it is important to uh, note that it is not just Descartes and Vitruvianism uh, that emerged at that time, but it was also Nietzsche and Wittgenstein who basically challenged these premises and wrote a different kind of uh, narrative that should go into uh, determining questions and perceptions of style when it comes to intervening uh, uh, in art theory and art criticism. Uh, so in that way, this book brings forward many different perspectives uh, which are very much essential in determining and in understanding the important role that style has played throughout history in the writing of art history and the emergence of art history as a discipline well around the 18th um, and the beginning of the 19th century. So the last book that I'm going to talk about today is called Art and Archaeology of Ancient India, Earliest Times to the 6th Century by Naman B. Ahuja, Professor of Indian Art and Architecture at JNU in Delhi. This book was published in 2018 by the Ashmolean Museum and it is based upon long-time research by Professor Ahuja, which spanned around a ticket at the Ashmolean Museum concerning the Indian and South Asian arts in its collections from the early historic period to around the 6th century. Um, in this book, um, a very nuanced perspective of Indian art history and writing about Indian art is presented where smaller objects of art and artifacts are presented in an equally significant manner uh, so as to better understand the, the different epochs of Indian history which are often overshadowed by these dynastic approaches which is prevalent well into the study of South Asian art history in our times. Um, this book is not an extensive, extensive catalogue of the collections of the Ashmolean Museum regarding Indian and South Asian art as it excludes the Buddhist arts of the Gandhara and the Northwest which is published in another companion volume by David Jongewald. But through its balanced combination of historicist and formalist perspectives, this book remains a very fine exemplar of art writing about South Asian art in the 21st century.